Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. All right, folks. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in this week, as always. Um, got my station all set up as, as as we usually had. I was weird. Like the, the camera angles always look different when I first set things up versus when I get things done and, and sorted. You just don't never know how it's going to be sometimes until you actually get out there and do it. All right. That looks a little bit better. Don't have the glare up here. So got a little bit of a mess back over in, in one of these corners, but we're going to be all right. We are going to be all right with it. All right. So um, hope you're all doing well. Again, like I said, um, today is, by the time you're listening to this and watching this anyway, today is uh, Thursday the 10th, and I am actually on the road right now as you're listening to this and watching this. So for all of my folks on, on the YouTube premiere, genuinely appreciate you being here um but you'll have to excuse me for not interacting with you live in the uh, the live chat because i am driving down the road heading east uh to the appalachia mountains to uh spend a weekend with my uh friend and tribal brother patrick with our uh, good friend uh papa olafson the alvatier workshop you guys know him you guys love him all the shamanic work that he does in the crafting arenas um, he's made a lot of the pieces that you see some of which are showing in this video for instance the drum um was made by by him uh, but yes we're on our way like i mentioned before uh on the road right now while you're listening and watching to this on a fine thursday morning uh to spend the weekend with him and to have this really immersive and inclusive uh shamanic retreat looking forward to this this has been planned um ever since like the beginning early parts of of this year um and uh just seeing some of the pictures and stuff that he's been sending uh sending us for this as as we're calling it the fire on the mountain 2022 it's uh, i've mentioned it before in some other episodes of the podcast where we are hoping for this to be a a regular recurring annual event uh, but this is the first one. So some of the pictures that he's been sending us of the, the the groundwork that he's been, you know, preparing for our arrival, you know, the campsites and um, the various things that we're going to be doing looks phenomenal. And I'm very excited to be able to to capture some some content while we're out here um, in North Carolina and share with you guys on the channel and on the podcast eventually in some form or fashion. Uh, but definitely be sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel because all of my short form content is released through there pre predominantly. Um, you go, of course, you've got the Facebook reels, you know, but the YouTube shorts is where I would love to get um, most of your views and stuff on because that's where I monetize. And without actually having to do anything, you can monetarily support this podcast and this channel 
by watching more of those con uh, short forms of content. Um, additionally, in, uh, uh, in, in, in addition to us driving and, and heading over to, to the uh, Uferhus estate <laughs> in the mountains of North Carolina, uh, on the 11th, which is the day after this is airing, is yours truly's uh, birthday. So 38 trips around the sun on the uh, 11th of November. And if you guys want to help uh, celebrate that in, in, in some form or fashion, the link tree link that is always annotated in the description, as well as in the show notes of every podcast. Uh, if you click on that link tree link, you'll find a couple real key things. Um, any which way that you want to support is, is, of course, always greatly appreciated. If you want to send a little something, something to, to me for my birthday, no pressure whatsoever, but you've got the Ko-Fi link, buy me a coffee for the price of a cup of coffee. You help support the podcast. You help, you know, uh, ensure that my birthday, I get to celebrate it just a little bit extra. You can also donate via PayPal. You can buy merchandise, which gets you some cool Midgard Musings apparel. And of course, a percentage of the sales of those items I see a, a percentage of. So you can get yourself something nice and do something nice for your boy over here. So check out all of the links that are down in the uh, link tree link that's that's posted there. And uh, see if anything fits your your schedule, your lifestyle, your ability to donate or, or help out, um, especially for, for my birthday. Um, so I will be a bit out of pocket for the next uh, three or four days. So be, again, be sure to be subscribed to the YouTube channel because every day until, uh, or every day this week, or, you know, so today, tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday, I'm going to be sharing some short form content that I pulled from the Heathenry 101 class that I taught um, a couple months back over Shadow Moon, or actually last month. So a little bit over a month ago, right around a month ago now. Um, I still have yet to compile all of the the footage um, because unfortunately during the during the lesson my my camera cut off several times so i have to reshoot some of the you know some of the content that gets put to to to, to complete the whole video but that video the heathenry 101 class that i taught at shadow Moot, is going to be released here on youtube um, before the end of season three of this podcast so again, I want you guys to make sure that you are not just subscribed to the Midgard Musings YouTube channel, but you also need to ding that little bell and select that you are notified for all notifications. So all of my short form content, all of my long form content, like the podcast episodes and anything else that I share, like this upcoming Heathenry 101 class that I taught uh, back in uh, back in October, you know, that video is going to be shared here on the YouTube platform and the YouTube platform only. Um, so if you're subscribed, listening to this as a podcast listener, be sure to, um, you know, hook, hook yourself up with the subscription on the YouTube channel that costs you absolutely nothing channel members. Of course, you get, um, some added perks like being notified early about content that comes out, um, and some other things, but check that out if you want, see what fits you. Um, but again, I don't have an exact date yet cause I still have to work on filming some lost footage and fill it in the gaps you know fill in the gaps of the of the footage that i have captured and splice it all together and do all the fancy technical wizardry stuff of putting video content together in a sort of a prose and cohesive format and that way you guys have that to to refer back to but again it should be out before the end of of season three which is really just about a month and a half away so before the end of this year um, you guys should have that and i will announce more specifics when I get them. So in addition to that, there should be some um, really nice footage that I hope to capture um, of our stay at the, uh, the Uferhus place and uh, Papa Olufsen's estate up there in the mountains and share with you guys just a little bit of what we're going to be doing. Of course, it is a bit of a closed off thing for myself and Patrick and him. And so there's definitely footage that's not going to be captured um, through our, our stay but there's going to be plenty of stuff I think that I'll be able to, to to get and and share with you guys you know when we get back if not before so definitely keep your eyes peeled for all that all right so now that we got some of all that stuff out of the way there there is um, 
something that I would like to share with you guys for today's podcast episode. This topic comes again as a listener and viewer and supporter request. So um, Debbie here, I'm going to redact the name out of it so that way it doesn't share any personal information. Not sure if these folks that I share information about ever want to be contacted. Um, but this was a comment that was left on the uh, Facebook post or poll. Yeah, I guess it was a post. It wasn't really a poll, but it was a Facebook post that I made a few weeks back asking folks what I should podcast about. And uh, Debbie has uh, been watching and, and supporting this platform for a long time. And she asks um, to do a podcast episode on how pagans live in a society surrounded by non-pagans. Um, you know, the where they have, you know, predetermined false beliefs about about us. And she's also asking for more drumming and as as someone else suggested. So um thank you, Debbie, again for the for the great question and topic for the for the podcast today. So yes, I do some, you know, various short form content of drumming. I don't really have a great like studio setup where I can get the best audio recording experience, but I do the best I can with what I got. So as I'm able to, most likely there will be some drumming footage that, that is captured uh, during the stay in, in North Carolina. So there should be hopefully be some, some really awesome uh, content for you there, Debbie, and everybody that enjoys that sort of thing. Um, but to her point, you know, pagans living now, uh, amongst non-pagans, I believe was the was the right. Yeah, living in a society surrounded by, um, yeah, I guess non-pagans, and out there perceived or, or predetermined or perceived false beliefs. And I guess you know we can talk about some of the challenges that folks like us and 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 you know have experience or face with people like that. Now I live in a, in a part of the country here in the United States that is affectionately <laughs> referred to as the Bible Belt. So the Southern states of the United States, uh, pretty much anything below what is uh, referred to as the Mason Dixon line um, are notorious, notoriously conservative Christian types. They, um, and I'm not going to get into the various political um, branches of, of it, but at least in this part of the South, in my part of the South, is a, is a very conservative Christian population. Um, there are churches everywhere, some small, some really wholesome, you know, small uh, community type, or, you know, organ organizations, um, denominational and non-denominational. Uh, all the way up to huge, you know, tens of thousands of members, um, megachurch type type things. Got them all around here. Uh, and I also noticed, too, that um, at least in this part, again, of, of Tennessee, this part of the south, this part of Tennessee specifically that I live in, is uh, pretty diverse when it comes to just denominations. You know, so you've got your Southern Baptists, you got your Pentecostals, you got your Church of Christ, you got your Catholics, um, everything in between, you know, non-denominational. Non and then you also got non-Christian um, establishments. We've got, you know, Muslim mosques, we've got uh, Jewish temples, we've got actually right down, not too far down the road from where I live, is a Buddhist temple. There is a, uh, uh, a, a an Indian or Hindu temple also in Nashville. Really, actually, a, a beautiful uh, temple. That's uh, you know just the 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 the, the structure, the, the the stone carvings, just everything about it is super super, you know, impressive in terms of the aesthetic of it all. So we've got a lot of various religions that. Um, you know, can practice publicly without without fear of of persecution or anything besides just those of the Christian faith. And believe it or not, here in the South, in this portion of the South, there is a rich community 
of polytheists, not just Germanic pagans, but um, some of the Celtic, Druidic uh, type pagans. We've got um, a, a very large, I think, uh, subset or subgroup of, you know, sort of the, the neo-pagan, eclectic, Wiccan types. Um, and more and more, I've, I've come to realize from from just going to different public events and meeting people in the area, there's there's a growing uh, presence of Germanic, Norse, heathens, pagans as well. And then other types, you know, um, some of the some of the online groups that I'm in, which isn't that many, but for instance, like the Middle Tennessee Heathens Facebook group is over 500 and some odd members. Um, and if I were to probably do a poll to see how many of those members are Germanic pagans or Norse pagans, right? Probably it'd be a good chunk of them. But that kind of diversity, religious diversity, cultural diversity, doesn't exist in all parts of the world for for sure, and definitely not in all parts of our country in the United States. And probably even less so uh, in the areas of the country like I'm talking about, the southern United States, what consistent what, what consists of you know the Bible belt <laughs> area. So when when we talk about like pagans living amongst non-pagans or living in a society um, that of non-pagans, I think the, the, the it's it's all relative, right? It's all relative to where you are and and some of the challenges and some of the things that you might encounter because of it. Now, I have attended some events, um, not a lot here in this area or a lot in general of, of, of a pagan nature, but Nashville has one every year um, called Nashville. It's a pagan pride day, you know, so it's a open to the public. Um, they have a lot of people that 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 show up as as vendors. So you've got, you know, craftspeople um, and, and so forth that that come. And I've heard and seen some examples of, um, you know, religious I don't know, bigotry or, or just intolerance being displayed from certain extremist, you know, fringe groups of, you know, in the name of their religion, protesting uh, against pagans um, that gather peacefully and, and have events like we have. I think you're going to see that no matter where you go. And that's, that's a very um, real thing. I mean, in some places, you probably see it worse than others, uh, especially in the South. But it, there, it's usually just, you know, all bark and no bite. Um, I've not heard of anything recently, at least. Uh, and that could be just, you know, because of the, the times and, and stuff that we're in. Everybody's got a phone. Everybody's got a recording device. And if, you know, you do something stupid nowadays, no matter who you are, um, you're going to have people um, documenting it, recording it and putting your name and, and your image and everything on blast. And, you know, you got all this media attention and sometimes that's what people want, right? They want to be, they want their 15 minutes of fame. They want to be known for something, um, whether it's, you know, good or not. So they do these things to, to garner that attention. And, you know, the reactions that they get, it, it, it's like fodder, you know what I mean? Like it fuels their, uh, their hatred and it fuels their intolerance. So, you know, I find the best thing to do is, you know, ignore the trolls, the real ones on in the, in, the, in public and, and the ones that are online too. Don't, don't feed the trolls, you know, and then they eventually get bored and they go and they find other things to do that don't involve you. But it is, it's, it's one of those things that you just, you can't get away from um, in, in, in like personal type things, you know, so if you go to events, you're going to see those types. Heck, you even go to concerts nowadays, you know, any kind of extreme rock and roll music, metal music, whatever. I was at a show in Nashville. Uh, I think it was Alice in Chains, you know, and Corn. And there were, you know, people outside, you know, picketing outside of the, the arena, you know, just being extra with their, you know, you're going to hell this and that and whatever. I'm like, yeah, but uh, so are my ancestors. They're actually there waiting for me. And uh, I have no problem with that. And it's not the same hell that you're thinking of kind of thing. But 
you know, I don't, again, I don't feed into the, the desire for attention that these people seem to not be able to function without, you know? Um, but it exists even more so online when people can be anonymous and hide behind a, uh, a fake persona, or they can just behave however, which way they want to behave with little to no consequences uh, for said behavior. You know, what's the worst that's going to happen? You know, your account's going to get banned or you're going to get a shadow ban from the platform uh, for saying a certain word or, or string of words, right? And then, you know, you'll get your access restored and you come back and you can do it again. And some people just, again, they thrive off of that type of stuff. And oh, I'll just make a new account and I'll be back and I'll, you know, all that silliness and nonsense, but it does, it exists. Um, so, you know, it, it all becomes part of this pagans living amongst non-pagans or, or living in a society with, with non-pagans and some of the challenges that we face. I guess one of the big things, you know, when, when I hear about stuff like this, um, I didn't really get like a, a solid question uh, out of Debbie's question, uh, you know, how pagans live in a society surrounded by non-pagans. Well, I mean, you just live your day to day, you know, but what could be some things that maybe we can learn from each other on that improve our life and also improve the life of those around us um, that we share existence and space and all that with. Um, so I'll tell you, I mean, how do I live as a pagan in a society with non-pagans? Um, I live just fine. I live just, just, just peachy, right? Um, none of what the non-pagans do, what, no, nothing that the Christians do, nothing that the Muslims do, nothing that the Hindus do, nothing that the Buddhists do, nothing that the atheists do, nothing that the agnostics do, right? Doesn't bother me, doesn't, doesn't affect me because they are not woven into my inner circle, my in and yard or in and guard. And so they are outside, they are out and guard, they are without and so those those things have very little to do with anything that I have going on because what I have going on is is tending to what is within. And so I remember at a time being very much concerned with things I was hearing on the news, right? Or the um, the latest, I don't know, uh, bit of tea if you will, or, or the latest gossip amongst the, the pagan communities about um, who said what about whom, or who, you know, is a racist, and who's a fascist, and who's a leftist communist, and who's a this and who's a that, right? I, I, I briefly got tied up into some, some pretty heavy duty allegations and things with some pretty, you know, well known and, and prominent people in pagan, in, in the pagan community. Um, and yes, there were some definite things that I, I couldn't sit silent about because, um, and I'm not going to revisit old history or, or, or try to, but for, for the sake of this podcast, you know, there were, um, there, there was content that I had put out that included a guest um, and that person um, was, was outed in the pagan community as, as saying some very derogatory, hateful and threatening things. And I'm like, I can't, be silent about that because I literally had this person on as a guest on my channel. And so, you know, you're almost forced in a position to um, make a stand about it. You can't remain silent. Um, I mean, I guess you can, but again, remaining silent and not saying anything and just hoping for the whole thing to blow over or whatever. I don't know. To me, that's like, there's a fine line between stuff like that, choosing your battles and, and not doing anything. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to follow the, the, the steps to just not do anything. I didn't want to remain stagnant or, 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 you know, uh, indifferent about it. I wanted to make a very clear stand on my, um, on my views on, on everything. And so I did, but with that being said, like, I realized like, man, you know, there's, there's so much toxicity that exists in almost any online public Forum. And, you know, you take on some of those risks when you do stuff like this. If you, you know, work hard enough and you put yourself out, you're on a platform that, you know, garners attention, that people subscribe, listen, view, watch, 
you know, hold you in a, in a position of, well, this guy seems to know what he's talking about and, and, and hold you in a certain esteem, you know, you have an obligation to, um, at least this is why I say, you know, I have a responsibility and obligation to um, maintain my reputation and, 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 and have it to be such that it is uh, one of honor, you know, and that if I'm caught in the midst of something that either I didn't know about or I was misled about that when I find the, the truth and when I find, you know, the, uh, the actual facts that I'm, that I'm speaking to them. Um, and, uh, you know, so that, that may be going off a little bit into the weeds uh, with the question, but, you know, living pagans as, you know, living as a pagan amongst non-pagans or living in a society as a pagan with so many of the non-pagans, again, I've, I've learned to just really kind of reel it back Mind my own business. There are plenty of other creators out here that are pagan heathens that are advocates and, and active um, forces in um, said movements where they have a very uh, prominent and active role in the public eye. And they do good work. They do phenomenal work and they're good at what they do. And I leave that type of stuff to them. I don't know if, um, if they want to uh, broaden their paganism or their heathenry to a larger audience and expand it in a way that um, is is manageable for them, then by all means, I applaud and, and support that. That's, that's great. Um, I try to kind of keep close tabs on the people who I know are the good ones. That way I always can refer um, people that have questions if they're looking for, you know, more resources to kind of be a part of their pagan journey that I can refer, you know, and I also at the same time try to keep an eye on the less than than good ones or if, you know, if somebody on that good side of, of public facing heathenry or public facing paganism says something about another group that can be substantiated and validated, then I'm then I'm more inclined to, you know, obviously do your own research, make sure make make your own claims, know your own things. But when, you know, you've got somebody who has such a good reputation in the pagan community saying, uh, saying things about some, something or someone else, you know, you got to think they've got their reputation on the line too. So to come out and to say something of a complete falsehood could be damaging to one's, uh, reputation, the Euphrain, you know, I've, I've talked about that before. It, it's definitely a thing when you do things in, in life, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's either building, or destroying building up or, or tearing down your reputation your refrain and at at the end of it all when your body dies as as our kinsmen and, and cattle die also the one thing that won't die is our reputation so it's it it is such an important thing that we uh preserve it and preserve it with honor so one of the ways that i do that is to, again not get caught up in the minutia of online arguments you know, what's the latest he said, she said BS about paganism? You know, who's the fascist now? Um, who's misappropriating what symbols? I mean, it's it's ongoing. Um, it has been ongoing and and I think it'll be ongoing for a while because again, some of the some of the things that get appropriated um for nefarious purposes, certain symbols, words even. Um you know that that's that's a long hard road to to travel down in the in the attempts of repairing the the skewed views that certain groups have 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 acquired and accumulated over centuries right it's tough to convince people that you know the swastika is is not a racist symbol it has been appropriated to means something that of that nature but in its origin and, and and originally speaking historically it is not and had no racism tied to it it's difficult if not impossible to change the perception of the population because of what literally happened in the 1940s in in germany right so again it's you know living as a pagan amongst non-pagans it's it is a it is definitely a pick your battles sort of thing um and don't don't uh and, and don't be surprised if you when you pick the wrong battle you know not to say that 
picking a battle to fight is is not noble and that there isn't place for that but don't be surprised if you bite a little bit off more than you can chew and then find yourself in the middle of something that you have a hard time getting out of and um i know that in in my heathenry and in the way that i practice um i'm i'm all about the 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 what is within you know the inner circle the the in and the yard the in and guard inner yard all the words i'm saying mean the same thing it's just how you pronounce them right those are the things that concern me. Those are the things to build uh, and and preserve the luck of my own luck, my chaminya, right? My inherited luck, the luck that I accumulate through my own deeds, my own actions, and then the 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 collective luck of our tribe, you know, um, and and adding that to the well and growing the tribe in a way that's going to give something to the future, whether it's you know children or um other people that are gonna be coming into this you know younger people literally aged younger than us that when our bodies go they're still the tribe that we built now continues on and it doesn't die with one person or one family it it continues on that's what's important to me not you know not some of the you know the the i guess for lack of a better term you know buzzfeed level articles of of what's going on in the world that doesn't really concern me. So I stay out of it all to the, for the most part and I mind my own business. And the business that I mind is, is again, that of myself and my tribe, you know, what, what, what we're doing to grow. And um, yeah, you got to be bump. You got to be mindful of bigger picture stuff, right? It's, this is the world that we live in regardless of whether you're pagan or not, you know, the other thing that I that I tend to not do is, and I see a lot of this is is um, or I used to see a lot of it. I maybe don't look in the direction to see what I'm about to talk about much anymore, but I'm sure it's still out there. Is that um, man? Pagans tend to, uh, especially like this, like Norse pagans, um, newer Norse pagans, newer Germanic pagans. They 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 get down this, they get off, the, they get on this kick. You know, or they go down this road of despising Christians and talking bad on Christians and just, you know, hating the religion itself because um, of of certain key things, you know, and you got to be real careful with that stuff, guys. And and I I get it. I mean, I grew up in Christianity. I was raised in a non-denominational form of of christianity some would argue my wife included that it was a cult and i see the reasons why um that it said of that name you know why that said um but at the end of the day um i look back and i go well i i you know i learned some of the things about life i learned how a community works together with each other despite the differences despite the challenges how a community comes together and looks out for one another i learned that that essence of tribalism by living in a community that was built off of, you know, quote unquote, Christian values. Okay. So that, uh, that was something that I don't necessarily attribute the, the Christian doctrine to, um, because again, you can do that without having those, you know, without having the dogmatic elements, but there's a, there's something to be said for 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 that when I look back and, and and as a pagan now, I can't, yeah, I can I can look back and I can say, well, you know, there's certain things about the doctrine or there are certain things about the way they did things that just that you know I don't jive with. They don't make literal sense, they don't make any logical sense, right? I can rationalize things pretty well and say that doesn't that doesn't make sense. But to to come at it from an angle of like, you know, all Christians are bad and, you know, we should blood eagle them all and all this other kind of just like inherently violent things to do against people just because of the way, way they believe. Like, guys, you realize <laughs> that's that's the very thing that you – that like if you want to – like the tables are flipped. Like that's what the Christians did to you. They, they hated the pagans at the time for not believing in their Christian god. And they would do the, the the various things about you know whether it's killing or 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 pillaging or raping or I mean just doing all terrible things to, to pagans you know and that's you know it it goes both ways you know people 
didn't like being invaded or raided. And so they would retaliate. And, and you know, religion aside, who, which God you believe in, whatever. I mean, just people were really, and are still just really terrible. <laughs> people are terrible, uh, regardless of the religion that they uh, that they follow. There, there, there's good pagans and there's good Christians and there's terrible Christians and there's terrible pagans, guys. Um, hope you're not, you know, just now realizing that. I hope that you know that the the goodness or the volatileness, volatility uh, of a person is not measured by the God or God's that they choose to venerate. You know, people are the way they are because of what is inside. And yes, you can say that there are factors about the religion and people are driven to do uh, incredible things, both good and bad, incredible things of an incredible nature in the name of their God or, the, or in the name of their religion. People can find strength, inspiration, power, motivation, all these things to accomplish great things in the name of their God or in the name of their religion. Um, and so it's, it's, it's really ultimately, I say, what, what is, what is deep down within you? What drives you? What is the purpose behind what you do? You can, you can make excuses of why you're doing it because of, well, it's what the Bible says, or, oh, because I, you know, this is what the way my ancestors lived, you know? And again, you can use that, you can use that reasoning and you can use that excuse to, to do good things, things of a good nature. You can use that to accomplish things of an evil and, and diabolical nature as well. So pagans living in a society with non-pagans. I, I don't really see it so much as an issue anymore. Again, we live in such a time and in, and in a in a society now where you can pretty much do almost anything, relatively speaking, right? You can do almost anything and not get bothered for it, at least here in the United States. I'm not speaking largely in, in the sense of, of the bigger picture of the world, right, globally, uh, because unfortunately, there are definitely still some places that you go which are heavily... Uh, Policed and, and and monitored and 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 enforced in ways that, um, you know, take away basic human rights, which is a terrible thing. But here in the United States and, and even in the South, where you know, again, if you want to do a, a comparison of pagans versus Christians, I mean, Christians got us outnumbered a lot. <laughs> um, but the nice thing about it, at least down here is that, uh, you know, people just are. As long as you're not bothering them, for the most part, again, if as long as you're not bothering them, then they're, then they're not going to bother you. You know, the, the the biggest problem I think that we see comes from some of these fringe groups, right? Some of these radical extremists, one way or the other, that uh, get press and 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 bad press is is press. You know what I mean? So they they'll they'll get on TV, or they'll get they'll get the news that that covers their stuff you know what i mean like i remember <clears throat> it wasn't all that long ago where you know the 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 afa or whatever had a or has we still do again that's how disconnected i am with the whole thing because that's you know it's in but minnesota but they've got they had this this church building that they bought and it's you know it's a whites only um establishment right so they don't uh if you're a person of color and 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 some of these other things you know you're not you're not welcome to to come in and, and be a part of it. And that's clearly bullshit, right? That that's fascist. That's, that's racist. That's horrible. Um, but Hey, you know, the great old United States constitution says that they can do it. And, um, you know, so that made the news. And then you had people that counter protested it like TAC and some of these other uh, people who, um, had, had, again, took a very specific stance against what AFA was doing. And without, again, going into the specifics of, a, of either organization, um, again, it's, it's that type of stuff that gets the press, right? It, it's that kind of activity. Meanwhile, you've got you know, probably dozens, if not hundreds, um, of other smaller groups of, of pagans just living peacefully, doing their own thing, you know, tying weird with one another, building and establishing luck, you know, and doing great things in their own respective communities. We just don't see it. 
we just don't hear about it. People don't have YouTube channels to to talk about it, which is, I think, great. I mean, keep keep your practices as private as as you can to, I guess, preserve the the sanctity and the, the sovereignty of it all. Um, but if you're out here like someone like me talking about your experiences, that's great too. Um, but it's not for everybody, and, and not everybody's going to do it. You know. Not everybody should be doing it. Not everybody has enough to to really share about it. But uh, there are plenty of channels like mine, right? There are plenty of pagans out here that are voicing their concerns. There, there are plenty, plenty of people that have podcasts and have a voice and uh, share their voice with the world and, and talk about their experiences and share their knowledge. Um, so, I mean... Pagans living in a society with non-pagans. I mean, we're here. We're here, guys. You know, we're 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 not. Um, you're not going to chase us away. I'm talking about like the Christians, like you're not going to run us off this time. You're not going to chase us away. If anything, you know the uh, the stuff that we hear about in the media that typically tries to put a bad light or misunderstanding on paganism. If anything, what that does is it is it sparks people like myself to educate more and to try to share more knowledge that way. You know, the bad things that you heard about it or the misinformation, like, oh, well, you guys are nothing but a bunch of devil worshipers, right? Or you're a godless pagan. I mean, number one, um, if if the devil is part of your worship, then you're not really pagan. You're Lucif you're you're Satanist, I guess, if you want to. And that's not even 100 percent accurate, right? Because, you know, which brand of Satanism are you talking about here? It's, you know, most Satanists I've heard, you know, that I know of her don't don't have a literal deity that they worship. If anything, the devil as a, as a deity would be Lucifer, a fallen angel, and that is definitely a deity that um, I know people venerate and worship Lucifer as as that fallen uh, angel or that demon, and some you know occult and uh, Enochian type beliefs. He's a part of their practices, and I have a friend, and he's been on the channel before, Richard, you know, who has. Uh, who has uh, invoked or incorporated Lucifer into his uh, ritual magic and practices. So, um, but that's number one. Number two, a, a godless pagan. I mean, can you get any more oxymoronic? You know, um, I have more gods than, than the monotheist uh, believers do. You know what I mean? Like a godless pagan, that makes literally no sense. We have many gods and goddesses and spirits that we uh, venerate in their own way, in our own ways, right? Um, so again, to 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 kind of educate and to show people that are misunderstood or scared even, you know, like I've had that happen before too, where I've been in a, um, excuse me, I've been in a, a ritual ensemble, you know, where I've had my face painted or I've had a mask on or I've had a look on my face or I've, or I've been done up in some sort of way that that changes my physical appearance. And uh, <laughs> this is one of the things that I think really put the nail in the coffin, as it were, for my interactions with my family. As you know, I had a picture online um, of of I was taking you know kind of stills of of a ritual that I was doing after the ritual, whatever. But I was taking some some photos for it to share the story about it. And one of the photos is me with like face paint on, a, you know, a bind rune or something on my head, and then you know I was in trying to to uh, I guess capture the the state of altered awareness, altered consciousness. So I had my eyes rolled up in the back of my head, you know what I mean? So you don't see my 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 irises, my pupils or whatever. You just see the whites in my eyes. And that picture, my gosh, man, like that picture got my uh, side of the family in New York like up all up in arms talking about how I'm look possessed. Um and 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 that was again one of the things that has prevented me from talking to my dying father or visiting my family and, and all, you know, my niece who was born last year, she's, you know, about a year and a half old now uh, that I've never met in person and don't know if I ever will because of stuff like that, you know, because of pictures. And it's kind of like, have you never been to the movies? Have you never watched a play? Have you never seen someone take on the form of a character as it were and that's kind of where i was coming at it from was like hey you know this is this is a portion of me this is it's more than just acting it's it's not even acting really it's it's yes maybe for the sake of the picture it was a a persona or an act 
to capture the essence of what I was doing. But I mean, that stuff is very real and it exists and, and is, and is wholesome. And it's not anything to be afraid of. And I understand the reason why, because it does, it, there's a shock value to it, but so is Alice Cooper, man. Like, so is, you know, so were, so were the Rolling Stones. So is Ozzy Osbourne. So were some of this, these pop media icons uh, of extreme music that have, and those even aren't that extreme to be honest with you, but you know, they've done crazy things and, and, and gotten the media hype, but they're, you know, everyday people. I'm an everyday person, you know, this, this thing that you see right here, I don't, you know, go to Kroger dressed like this. Wish I could really what's stopping you either. What's stopping us from wearing tunics and walking around in robes. I mean, nothing really, nothing illegal about it. But again, I don't go out in public like this. You know, I have a podcast, I have a, I have a platform, you know, so this is part of the visual uh, experience. This is what you guys come here to watch. You know, uh, you don't come to watch a, a, a guy in, in regular plain clothes. You come here to listen and watch what you got here. So again, it, it's all part of it. And it doesn't, it doesn't just define a person because of, of of what you see on the surface. It's it's very superficial. It's very shallow, if you ask me. To draw conclusions about someone, anyone, based off of just what you see, you know, their appearance, um, uh, whatever. So I say that when it comes to pagans living amongst non-pagans and and how i guess how we can do it uh it really is not that hard if you just focus on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to do with the people who want to do the same thing or things as you your community your inner circle tribes your inner yards your clans your huts your hearts whatever you label you know the extensions of your families as or um you know, whatever it is that you got, focus on that, right? And and try not to just be inherently ill towards anybody else, regardless of what they believe, whether they're Christians, whether they're not, you know, they're not coming around bothering you. And again, it, everything's a little bit different for everybody. You know, you might have that neighbor who every time you go outside to play your drum is, is going to come out there on their porch and scream at you and just be generally intolerable of your presence, or you might have, you know, if you're living in an apartment and you're listening to music, you know, you may have, again, neighbors above, below you, next to you, um, depending on the building structure that you're in, right? That particularly thin walls, whatever that, you know, could, uh, you maybe got to be a bit respectful of each other's, co you know, space that you all cohabitate in. Things like that. I mean, it's, it's really doesn't, it, none of it really is, is inherently just pagan versus non-pagans. It's just, you know, being a decent human being. And then when others aren't, you know, you have measures that you can take. You either need to adjust your lifestyle a little bit, or if they're being unreasonable, you can address it in a in a lawful and in and decent way. You know, depending on where you are, that that could mean a lot of things. And we'll just leave it at that. You know, some places in the south, um, they you know, people don't have 911 on their dial pads they just handle their own business <laughs> you know what i mean um and anywhere else for that matter but again it's it, it doesn't it doesn't to me it doesn't come back to you know pagan versus non-pagan it's you know people are just people and there's diversity that exists that we all have to uh consider and, and be considerate of okay like i'm openly pagan but i don't go around running outside dancing around a fire screaming at the top of my lungs because I've got neighbors that are eight feet, 10 feet away in the next lot, you know, um, not going to be disrespectful of their disrespectful of their space just because I'm a practicing pagan. I'm going to be respectful of, of my neighbors. You know what I mean? Um, I actually had this told to me one time when I went, when I was, when I was visiting my family in New York, you know, my, my parents definitely don't agree with me as a, as being heathen clearly. And I remember I went to their house and, um, you know, I have a shirt my wife got for me from uh, Grim Frost, and it says heathen right on it. Big hammer on the chest of it. it says heathen across the top. Um, and I, of course, I wear my hammer usually outside of my shirt, you know, and I went there and I hadn't thought anything of it, right? Because they knew 
they had known that I was pagan, heathen, whatever. And I, you know, just wear the shirt. It wasn't like I was trying to push it in front of their faces or flaunt it or anything. I just was wearing a shirt, same shirt I wear day in and day out everywhere. Right? It wasn't any kind of declaration for me, but it was perceived by them as a disrespectful act. Now, is that kind of nuts? Is that kind of crazy? You could say that, but at the same time, it's their house, their hall, their call, their rules. And if their hall rules are that, you know, we don't want you coming here looking like that, wearing that type of clothing, then I, as a guest of their home, should respect that. And I should, you know, again, if, if you were to walk into a, uh, a home of, of perhaps, you know, someone of Asian culture, and it was their custom to take their shoes off, and you walk in the house with their shoe with your shoes on, knowing that that's an offense, and you do it anyway. I mean, that's kind of that's that makes you a pretty crappy person, you know what I mean? And um, well, you could you could say, well, that's not my culture, you know. I, I walk in my house with my shoes on all the time. That's fine. You can do that when you're in your house or anywhere else besides there. So, a lesson learned for me was, yeah, when or if I ever go back to New York to visit my family, that. I will not openly wear my hammer. They know I'm pagan. I know I'm pagan. That doesn't have to be something that I need to put on. And I don't have a point to prove. Okay. Most of you people don't either, you know, so quit trying to be like, I remember hearing people talking about how uh, I'm never going to walk into a church again because, uh, you know, they're going to kick me out or I'm not going to, you know, if I go into a church, I'm going to wear my, my hammer, you know, loud and proud. And it's, why, what, what do you have to prove? Going into a church for whatever it might be, it could be a relative's baptism, could be something that your family wanted you to do, and you just, you know, you do it out of respect for them, right? I mean, like, come on, guys, like, you're not gonna, you're not a bad pagan just because you go to, to church, and and you're, if anything, it's it's kind of it's it's tainting your own reputation. It's making you look pretty petty um, if you just if you go in there just to try to stir the pot. What do these people do to you? Probably nothing. You know, and I'm just using my own examples again. I don't know everybody else's situation and I'm not trying to, um, you know, tell you that, you know, your reasons are invalid or anything like that. I'm just saying for the most part, I think that a lot of people that get up in arms and get kind of, you know, agitated with, with the Christian population as, as pagans, right? People that get agitated with the Christian uh, they, they, they're doing it just to be they're doing it just because like they have no real basis or foundation on it it's like there's nobody here that persecuted there's nobody here right now in today's day and age that you know hunted you down and tried to kill you because you wouldn't confess and get baptized in the name of jesus christ they haven't been doing that for a really long time and if anything you probably have some ancestors that were doing the the persecuting on the pagans. You know what I mean? Like, look, let's face it. Were our, were, our, were our ancestors pagan? Yeah, sure. A lot of them were. And they were also, a lot of my ancestors are Christian. The, the one ancestor of mine who I want to connect with the most, my grandmother, died devoutly Christian. You know? So, I'm sorry, but... I'm not going to just hate on somebody because that's the religion they choose to connect with and 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 practice and follow the the, the most, right? I'm not going to let that be the thing that I judge somebody on. I'm going to let their deeds speak for themselves. I'm going to let their actions determine the worth that this person has or doesn't have. And that's what I would expect. I I don't expect my religion to be the thing that someone doesn't care for me for right like they, they they should determine my worth and they should put worth or value on me based off of my my actions my deeds that's all i've asked for that's all i'm going to continue to pursue is do things you know because they're right because they're good and if it's my religion if it's my faith if it's my if it's my folk way if it's whatever you label you want to put to it as that inspires me to want to do it then i guess you could say that there's probably some truth to it, um, but at the end of the day, you know, I just want to coexist. I want to exist peacefully. I want to exist um, wholly. 
okay completely and yes there's a there is a connotation between holy as in h-o-l-y like sanctified holy and then there's a there's a connotation between that and whole as in the completeness i'm gonna talk about that too one day i've, I've i forgot about that um the the correlation the connotations between holy meaning blessed and holy meaning complete might talk about that in this next podcast episode you never know um but so yeah guys there's there's some talking points, right? Obviously, I don't have all the answers, and I'm, and and just thinking about Debbie's question, um, I love it because it puts things in my mind that I haven't maybe thought about, but it's clearly something that's on somebody else's mind, and and it kind of plants a seed and, and it sparks something for me to to weigh in on, and then you guys get a chance to hear it, and you you get to weigh in on it, and. As, as I mentioned before in the beginning of the podcast, there's all kinds of ways that you can do it. You know, calling in, emailing, you can send me a message on Facebook. You can at me on Twitter. If you at me anywhere else, like Instagram, I'll see it eventually, but I don't have direct access to that. So, you know, Facebook and Twitter are the best social media platforms. And of course, here on YouTube uh, or just email in or call in either way. But yes, have your voice heard, share your thoughts as well and become part of this whole ramblings thing that's going on every week here on uh on multiple platforms actually all all the platforms so that's going to about wrap it up for me today guys and gals again be sure to be subscribed to the youtube channel to the midgard musings youtube channel because over the next few days especially uh this week um there's going to be some short form content that is going to give you a little bit of an inside look at to the as to the heathenry 101 class that i taught back at shadow moon and then that full length feature video um will be announced and released sometime before the uh the end of this year um check out the link tree link in the description and show notes if you want to send something my way for my birthday this weekend uh, or just as a general support for this podcast for this channel for for all of the things um so thank you debbie for the question uh or for the topic in this uh this week's podcast episode thank you all especially all of my patrons, all of my channel members, all of my top fans and supporters everywhere on all platforms. Thank you for continuously being active and being present here, um, engaging, right? Always remember to engage with the algorithm gods. They are fickle. They change constantly. They, they, they need that attention. They need that validation, guys. They're one of the ones that need that validation, but I don't. But yes, you guys are all wonderful and great. Thank you for the constant and ongoing support. Um, looking forward to sharing with you some of the um, happenings from our Fire on the Mountain retreat. That's uh, that's going to be happening literally within the day or so. So as you are listening and watching this on this Thursday, just know that uh, I send my best wishes to you from the road and then the mountains of Appalachia in North Carolina. So thank you all so much listening and watching today's episode if you do like it be sure to give it a thumbs up share it around let me know what you think down in the comments until we see each other again may the gods continue to notice you and may your ancestors smile upon you thanks <laughs>